Welcome back, my friends, to what is part five in our series on Conva.js. And in the last video, we began to talk about animation, and we talked about a kind of animation called tween animation. One thing I forgot to mention in that video was that the word tween comes from the word between. Maybe I'm beating you over the head with this, but uh, if you pass on a tween animation, Conva knows the start value and the end value of the tween, and it knows the duration of the tween, and it figures out all of those in-between values, how far the shape should have traveled over, you know, one second or 1.3 seconds or 4.9 seconds or whatever it happens to be. So it figures out those in-between values, and that's why it's called a tween, in case you were wondering about that. I don't think anybody was, but all right. And in this video, we're going to talk about custom animation. Now, custom animation is like tween animation in that we're going to animate stuff, of course, but it's different in the following ways. First, a tween animation works on a single shape, and custom animation, using custom animation, you can animate multiple shapes. Second, the tween animation had a duration property, so we knew exactly how long it was going to go on. Custom animation has no duration. It just keeps animating, keeps going until either the program itself ends or it is stopped programmatically. The animation is stopped programmatically. And third, uh, there is no set endpoint. We don't necessarily know where we're going with a custom animation. Instead, there's a, uh, there's a function that gets called once every frame, and uh, how the shape or shapes are going to change over that, uh, over that time period are determined dynamically inside that function. So if a tween animation is kind of like a train on a train track moving back and forth, right? We can move it forward toward the end or backward or you seek through it or like that. You can think of a custom animation as more like a billiard ball, where once the ball is in motion, it might... Uh, bounce off other balls and change course, or ricochet off the edge, or go into a pocket and stop the animation, presumably. Uh, so, uh, needless to say, custom animation can get just as complicated as you like, and so in this video we're just going to give you kind of a flyover, sort of a taste of what's involved, because uh, it deserves its own series, actually, animation. I don't want to do that, so this is just a simple one. So let's take uh, let's take uh, the animation, the tween animation in the previous video and recreate it using a custom animation. And we'll see that it is a little more code, but much more flexible for that very reason. Okay, so as before, stage with a layer added to it. Okay, our friend the star here. Okay, you can tell by now I like stars, right? Not particularly, but what are you going to do? And we say, let anim and set that equal to a new conva.animation. And this takes not an object. This is an outlier. It takes two parameters, a function name and a layer name. Okay. This function is going to get is going to get called once we start the animation, which we can do in just a moment. In fact, let's do that. Anim.start. Start. There we are. Uh, so once once this animation is started, this uh, each frame function, which is here of course, should get called once every frame about 50 to 60 times a second. And we're passing in the layer, also a, a, le a reference to the layer so that it can redraw that layer for us and we don't have to worry about that by calling the layer.draw method. Okay, so first let's just make sure that this is actually working without animating anything console.log, okay, and if we save and refresh that, okay, we're getting okay, and if we count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, that seems to be roughly 60, 50, 60 times uh, frames a second. Okay, so this is being called. So I am going to get rid of that. I, that. I find that irritating. So let's do this. We said we were going to recreate that tween animation. That meant that we were going to take our friend the star here and slide him left to right across the stage like that. Well, uh, let's say, let's create a new x property, let new x, and we'll set that equal to the old x property. And we'll just simply add, this is each frame, let's say add two, okay? And then having created that, let's say star x, new x, and this should, if we've done this right, increment the x value by 2 every second. Okay, save and refresh. Bingo, it works. Now there's a bit of a bug here because it's going to slide right off the edge of the canvas. We can do, we can change that or uh, 
uh, adjust for that by saying new, let's say, if not capital, what am I doing? If new x is greater than, and what did we want to say? Let's say 550, then no x equals 550. All right, there are cleaner ways to do this, but this is fine for now. And we're going to say anim.stop. And this will do just what you think. It's going to stop the animation. Okay, it won't return from this function, however, it just won't make sure it will make sure the function is not called again. So now save and refresh. Our star is reborn, and it should stop over there, and bingo, it does in fact stop. Okay, well that just could not be simpler. But you know what? There's another bug here, and this bug is more insidious. It turns out that this, we're moving at a constant rate of two pixels per frame, right? But those frames are not coming at a constant rate. Browser frame rates are notoriously unstable. In ideal circumstances, it may be 50 to 60 frames a second, but if the computer gets even a little busy, or for any of a number of other reasons, that frame rate can drop to 40 or 30 or, God forbid, 20 frames a second. So we need to account for that. We need to somehow find out our current frame rate and adjust this accordingly. Well, how do we do that? Well, you know, it sounds like a big old bag of worms, right? Oh, Jesus, now we got to, you know, instantiate a new date object and call get time on it and keep two of them so we can compare them and all that. Well, you know what? We don't have to do that because it turns out that this whole time, uh, Conva has been passing in an object to us, which we can call frame. And in fact, let me just do something here. I'm going to comment this all out, and let's just log out the frame object to our console. Save and refresh. And not log, there we go. Console log. What am I doing? Console log. There we go. Now we get a bunch of objects, okay? And actually, there's one object that we really want. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it down here, but there is a property on that object called time diff. And if we set that, look at that. The time diff property is the number of milliseconds since the last one. Now, this is pretty small. I don't know how clearly you guys can see this, but it looks like we're getting seven, 16, 17 point something, uh, which works out to very roughly 60 frames per second, which actually isn't too bad. Okay, so we're going to use this time diff property to adjust what we had been hard coding in. Okay, so let's do this. Before we do anything, I'm going to come up here and create sort of a constant. Okay, we're going to say let PPS for pixels per second. I'm going to set that arbitrarily to 200. Okay, now uh, let's say, let's see, when we calculate the new X property, we're going to start with the current X property and we're going to add well, how do we do this? Okay, it's just a tiny bit of math here, but we're going to say, okay, frame.timediff, okay, now that's going to give us like 16 or 17. We need to divide by 1,000 to give, to convert that into milliseconds, okay, and I'm going to put uh, parentheses around that to make it more readable. I'm not sure if I need that necessarily. I'm going to multiply that by our PPS variable here, or constant here. It's not actually a constant using let, but anyway, I'm going to wave our hands at that. If I've done this right, and save and refresh, okay, very nice. It does work, and we can rest assured now that we've done this, that if the frame rate changes, if it drops or picks back up again, our, our star will not slow down and then pick up speed again and like that. So when you use a custom animation, as we're doing here, you need to leverage this frame.timediff property in the way that we've done here. Okay, but let's say now, okay, let's, uh, and, and so in so doing, we've pretty much, uh, we're going to wave our hands at the easing property and the on finish property and things like that, uh, method rather, method, property, property, anyway, uh, but basically we've pretty much recreated the tween that we had in the previous video. But now let's, let's up our game here. Let's say that when we reach the right edge of the screen, we don't want to stop it. We don't want to stop the animation. Let's say that we want to bounce back, okay, and go back the other way. To do that, we're going to say, I'm going to create a direction thing, a direction <laughs> variable up here, and set that equal to positive one, and we'll come in here, and we'll add, or multiply rather, by direction. Now, right, this really should do nothing here, because 
of course, when we multiply by one, right, we're, that's the, there's some, there's some property in math, isn't there? When you multiply by one, you get one. That's the multiply by one, you get one property or something. Anyway, if we have, in fact, hit the right edge of our screen, of our canvas, let's say direction equals minus one. There we go. And then we're not going to stop the animation. We're going to go back. If we've done this right, we should hit the right edge and then bounce back and move off the left edge. So let's, let's try that. Save and refresh. Bounce back. It worked. And we're going to run off the left edge this time. Okay. Else if so we can say else if mu x is less than not 0, but let's say 50. Mu x equals 50. And this time direction equals 1. Okay, so this should, and I'm going to up that to 300, make it a little faster. Save and refresh. And there we go. This should, therefore it works. Okay, there, <laughs> therefore it works. It works very well. Okay. It does indeed work. So that is how you do custom animation. A bit more verbose than tween animation, but it is quite useful, and I encourage you guys to use this. Okay, thanks for watching, and come back for part six in our series where we'll talk about performance, which it's high time to talk about.